Okay, I'm going to attempt to nap a point out of this cinnamon obsidian. I'm calling it cinnamon. I don't know what it's called, but it's uh, not quite a mahogany. It's more brown than red. It does have little black specks in it. Uh, the color reminded me of cinnamon yesterday. All right. Let's see. All right. So as I remember, this was kind of delicate. Let's see. This one was a little bit better because it was more like a dacite. Yeah, I'll try anyway. If, if I break this one, I'll just use another piece of the other stuff. Okay. Okay. This is a three eighths inch diameter or no. Let's see. This is not the half inch, is it? Maybe this. Yeah, it's the half inch. I also have a three quarter that I was using. Is that what that is? Or is it that's five eighths? Okay, I'm using the half inch aluminum right now. Yep, yeah, feels like typical delicate, typical delicate obsidian, which is a lot like fused glass. Yeah, or fusible glass. It's pretty soft. I don't have my gaiters on. Hold on. This stuff is kind of transparent, so I, uh, if I don't put the gaiters on, I won't be able to tell if this stuff gets in my shoes. Let's see. Yeah, it's, it's it's somewhat transparent once it gets really thin. So, hold on while I do this. I was just working on something else, so I said, "Man, it's getting late. I need to do a video." Yeah, with. With delicate glass, it tends to shatter and go everywhere, even if you're napping it correctly. It, it sprays flakes everywhere. All right, I'm gonna leave the glove off because it was starting to get in the way anyway. Yeah, a rough abrader will take some of the some of the width away but it, it eliminates the delicate areas so much faster than a fine abrader this is just for smoothing it doesn't really take off a lot of flakes when I use the fine abrader delicate stuff it's not a great idea to make it thin to make it extremely thin but I'll see yeah I can't I can't do this in good conscience without the glove hold on yeah too many invisible flakes Alright. 
it's going to get in the way, but I'd rather have a little bit more difficulty with the glove than to have those invisible flakes on my hand and then by accident I'll rub my hand up against something or whatever and one of those flakes will dive right in. Dive right in and hide under my skin. Yeah. Then I gotta dig it out. I'll probably take the glove off in a, a little bit when I get down to uh, extreme thinness. Am I gonna do extreme thinness on this one? When at just now I said I shouldn't. Well, of course, it's a video. No one wants to see safe napping on video. They want to know the potential. What is its potential? How thin can you go? I will go as thin as possible without breaking it. And if I do break it, you'll know how thin you can go. pretty cool it even has little granules like ground obsidian I mean ground cinnamon ouch mm -hmm. yeah unreleased flakes but they're not bad they'll, they'll pop out in a minute Just gotta watch out for the step fractures. Can you see what's going on? No. A little bit. What can I compare it to? I don't know yet. It's not like the other mahogany obsidian because it's this is more more smashy than the than the triple flow, although it is just as slick and slippery. It does not feel like a plastic. Feels like glass for sure. Some of that black butter dacite feels like a plastic. It doesn't nap like plastic. It's not what I mean. It just feels on the surface like I'm holding a a, a very dense plastic with the other stuff. This one feels like glass for sure. And it feels heavy. It's a dense, heavy glass. At least on this piece. Now, this other one, this doesn't feel as heavy and dense. This feels more like a dacite. I've never seen a brown dacite. So that's it's an interesting piece, the other one. I'll probably nap that one on video too. In the coming week, not tonight. If this one does not break, this one will be available in the auction. Yep.
I have an option uh, auction every week on Mondays and you bid in the comment section it lasts from about 12 noon Monday to 9 p.m. Monday Eastern time 12 east 12 noon Eastern to 9 p.m. Eastern if you're on central time it's from 11 a.m. Central to 9 to 8 p.m. Central and yada 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 depending on your time zone and you can look at my previous auctions to see how you're supposed to do it or you can watch one of my previous auctions I read my cheat notes on the rules at the end and there's rules in the description box it's not that complicated you just bid in the comment section and when the time's up I start announcing the winners I start announcing the winners when the time is up and if you win you gotta email me your info so I know where to send it and how to make payment arrangements or I need you know you're, you need to send me an email so we can make payment arrangements that kind of thing And that's how it works. Some guys say, well, I don't know how much it's worth, so what do I bid? Well, just wait. Someone will usually bid on it. If no one's bidding on it, just bid five bucks. What if you want to bid 50 cents? Okay, bid 50 cents. Just remember, shipping starts at about five dollars. Because these are sent as packages so if you don't pay at least or if you don't bid at least five bucks you're not even covering the shipping that's free shipping by the way all right enough of talking about that it's distracting me I'm getting crushings it's very difficult to see in this video I can see it pretty good in person, but when I look through the viewfinder, it looks like I can't see anything. It's very dark. But even with the black the black obsidian, I can see stuff. This one is difficult to see anything. You saw how I thinned it down to the preform, right? Right? You caught it. You were able to catch all that? Yes? No? Oh well. It's at the pre yeah, it's at the preform stage. Next stage is coming up. Take my glove off and see if I can get more precise. Get thinner. And uh, tolerate all the flakes because at this time it's worth taking the chance because I don't want the glove to interfere with the strikes and end up breaking it I want to go as thin as I can within reason and I'm much better at that if I'm holding it without the glove So some of the strikes are for large flakes, some of the strikes are for tiny flakes. I'm not going to tell you what the difference is or how do I know what to, what to flake. All I'm going to tell you is whatever is not the arrowhead goes away. And I attack the worst first usually. I try to do damage control uh, wherever I can quickly. Sometimes I'll leave something 
like a step fracture sitting there for a while because there's something else that I think might be worse and I'll do that first I'm going to try to get rid of that little step fracture right there doesn't seem very significant but it gets in the way turn the percussion flicker to a fresh spot I don't want anything interfering it's still crushed see it's, it's a crushy material even though I did a very ground down area it was at a good angle I left it open to I didn't have, I don't think I have my finger on it the path and uh, I hit it pretty good and it still it took care of most of the step fracture but it ended up crushing right there I just brushed away a lot of that crushed area it doesn't look too bad the problem is when it gets like this and I'm trying to thin it see how the edge is all wonky it's difficult to match up a good area to strike with a good area to thin not all the good areas to strike are next to good areas to thin down so if it's not a good area to thin down where it's, there's a good striking spot I've got to modify the edge so that I'm going to strike in an area that it should be thinned or it's good for thinning in other words right where it should that's what's good that's what I mean by a good spot to thin right where it should be thin yeah I'm installing even more step fractures in the area where I just removed the step fracture why I'm trying to thin that area and it's not cooperating obsidian obsidian can be inconsistent this looks pretty consistent but it crushes especially when you get down to thinning the thin piece that's when all the ugliness starts rearing its ugly head when you start thinning a thin piece I'm trying to be careful with it not to take too much off but it didn't go it didn't travel well enough see I'm careful and it didn't travel well enough so now I gotta take a chance and hit it from somewhere else and hope it doesn't break Let's see where can I hit I gotta make it more narrow there's nowhere it's, that's good to strike right now Even with obsidian that can run long flakes, you know, you can run long flakes on obsidian. You still got to be concerned about not being able to go as far with the flake as you think. Yep. All right, I got to thin down the tip. I don't want to thin down the tip. I'm leaving them a little thicker these days so I can pressure flake that thinness later. Pressure flake it to a thin state later, so I'm not whacking the tip with the percussion flaker. See, that didn't go far enough either. That was supposed to go into that area and wipe those out, but it didn't go far enough. Why? Because I'm not hitting it hard and hard enough. If I'm hitting it really, really hard. I'm taking a big chance on breaking it. Okay. 
Come on. That's not even loosening up. Okay. All right, I took a big chance and just hit it hard. Let's see if this rock candy type obsidian is gonna respond. That wasn't too bad. The danger of hitting it really hard is getting a crack where it initiates. And this, in this case, it didn't crack right there. Not that I can see. That was another hard hit, and that seemed to have behaved. Yeah. I still have that one little step fracture right there. Is there a way to just clean that off? Not that I can see. Is it still lumpy? Yeah, it's still lumpy. I can thin it down more than this. But you know what? I don't think I'm going to. Just a little bit from here. Because I am going to notch it. I need the base to be thin. Yeah, okay. Now it's behaving a little better. Maybe I'm getting used to it. Maybe it's because I'm hitting the base, which a lot of times it, it responds well to flaking. That's why flutes are possible, because some for some reason flakes run well from the base if you do it right. Yeah. Yeah, there's no place that I will want to hit this really, really hard to get it smoother and flatter. But maybe right here. Did it do it? Kind of, sort of. Some of you might be thinking, this looks a lot like beer bottle glass. Does it nap anything like beer bottle glass? Actually, yes. It, it has that glass feel to it. Yep. Beer bottle glass, though, is more crushy than this, believe it or not. When I'm thinking about it, even though this is crushy, it's not as crushy as beer bottle glass. Yeah. All right. But beer bottle glass does not snap in half as easy as a lot of this stuff. This one is actually, I'm, I'm feeling I'm, I'm lucky with it, but it may be a type that doesn't snap in half very easily. Alright. I'm feeling like maybe I'm just being lucky. Fate is on my side this time. Or luck is on my side. So this next stage is just pressure. And a little bit of pressure flaking too. <laughs> yeah, it, there's a lot of anxiety and pressure to get this right. It is very delicate. Dang it. It doesn't take much at all to flake this with pressure. Hold on. I need to sharpen the tip. I was using this earlier on a different piece and I dulled it. It needs to be a little more pointy. bit rounded just so I can 
increase the area that I'm pushing on so it'll take a bigger flake because this this uh, arrowhead preform is not that small it's still fairly large for a arrow point it's not large for an at level dart point it's two and a half by inch and a half it's at little dart point size right now once it starts getting below two inches or two inches and below it's like arrow point size yeah all right i'm getting itchy from these flakes Mm -hmm. I'm going to be in this corner so that it won't get blurry. See, if I do this, it'll focus on my thumb and not that. If I get my thumb out of the frame, it'll hopefully keep its focus on the workpiece. Doing the very tip is not my strong point. It's not my strong suit. I should work on that. Because my pet peeve is I hate breaking off tips. I hate breaking off tips. And then my one of my weakest areas of flint napping is the tip. So I end up breaking even more than I normally would. If I have just if I would just sit down and practice only tips, I could probably get much better at it. Okay. I have not sat down specifically to practice doing the tips. I do it I do the tips on every video and it seems like I do it the same way every time and then I'm trying to leave it thick to thin down toward the end of the operation. And hopefully that'll improve my odds of not snapping pieces of the tip off either by accident or by thinning attempts yeah you can break the tip off by accident if it's too thin in the beginning dang it Premature flickeration. It'll leave a little crushed area. If it flakes too soon, you're not able to push off a flake. It'll flake prematurely. It leaves a little crushed area, usually. And then you gotta come back and try to pressure flake off that crushed area, and then you lose a lot of width. And you're sitting there frustrated. Because I keep losing width, can't preserve the width. Because of the crush, crushing. Stupid tip crushes. Alright, so I think it may be a good strategy to leave the tip thick in the beginning and then thin it when it's at this stage. And I'm going to move on to regularizing the rest of it. And I'll come back to the very tip later. Or I'll come back to thin the tip more later with a flake just these flakes are hitting me in the face bouncing off the pad and hitting me in the face this is very jumpy very jumpy obsidian Let me know if you don't never have the obsidian hit you in the face. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. I bet you there's some people out there that say, What the heck? I've never had obsidian spray me in the face with flakes. While well, pressure flaking. Never. You're lucky. Either that or you sit very far away from it. I gotta sit close to it and bend over and get within range because my reader glasses cannot read from far away not even with my prescription reader glasses and yes I do have prescription close-up reader glasses 
they make me feel queasy. I can't nap with them. I gotta use the regular Walmart specials. Yeah. You might say, it's just the wrong prescription, dude. You didn't get a smart attendant. Get someone smart and get good glasses and stop fussing. Yeah. Get a good technician. I know. You never know which is the good technician, though. You never know. Even the good ones, they get tired. They've already seen like 50 people, 5-0 people that day or whatever. I don't know what their workload is, but I bet you it's a lot. Everyone's blind these days. The diabetes. Diabetes affects your eyesight. You didn't know? Of course you knew. Let's see. All right, what do I do? It's 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 pretty regular. I gotta start to thin down some of this stuff. I can thin it through this area here and get rid of that little step, and then I gotta thin this bump on top there. I can probably do that with pressure if I play my cards right. Am I playing poker with the arrowhead? Uh, no. It's more like chess. Poker's got a little bit more risk. You gotta pay attention to the cards. Um, you know, hold, you, if you got a good memory, you can know what cards have been played, and your you know your odds later on that uh, other people don't know. If they're not as good as you are at memorizing which cards have been played already, uh, it's not like that with napping. If there is a, a, a risk, but the the risks don't get less as you play. You know, they get worse as you get closer to the end. It becomes more mysterious because you don't know what's going to happen toward the end. It gets more and more dicey. More dicey in the game of cards? Yep. I thought that was a game of dice. Yeah, that too. It becomes more of a dice game, I think. All right, it's been regularized pretty much. What can I do to thin it down? Uh, that's still a lump on that side, but I don't see a good area to attack it. I don't, I don't see a good spot where I can attack that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it. You know, there's a spot like right here on this edge and run a flake this way but it's already narrow there it's gonna be made more narrow I guess so I'll make it more narrow just for you guys just because some of you noticed you noticed what I noticed I just don't like noticing those things I say now nah, let's skip it but there's too many out there that don't skip it they don't want me to skip it. It's, it's right there, dude. Come on. You're, you're right there, and it's right there. Just do it right there. Just flake it right there. Yeah. You'll see. If I break it, it's your fault. Did I get it? It flattened it a little bit. Yeah. It did run. It didn't run all the way over the top, though. It started right there and it ran a little bit. It's kind of insignificant. I didn't lose that much width, but it's dull right there, so I've got to go back and undullify it later. See, it's got grinding around there now. 
You can't see it because you're blind, but there's dulling. I gotta undull it. Yep. I gotta thin it more too. Just so you can see how thin it can go. Right? Or no? I should just leave it. But that's no fun. Ooh, it's Christmas. Look at all those snowflakes. Yeah, a good edge for... It's a good edge for striking... Hold on. Excuse me. This is, see how low it is? Dipping... I can strike into that area. See that? The grinding highlighted it really nicely. You won't get a nicer shot than that, that's for sure. You won't. That's a nice view. Alright, to, to ensure proper contact between the flaker and the edge, it's got to be smooth. Not lumpy. On the flaker tip. And it helps a little bit on the edge of the workpiece too. You know, make sure it's not too lumpy. Make sure it's smooth wherever I smoothed it. Yep. In case you didn't know, it's 36 minutes, some guys are already asleep. But for those of the hard for those hardcore people that are still awake. I want to see, want to see the cinnamon. This is Elmer's glue. I was working with Elmer's glue. I probably should not have a. Probably should have gone with epoxy. But I, I wanted to work with something natural. Elmer's glue is a natural glue. I might regret it. Did it do something? Did it fan out? It did something and did fan out, but it doesn't terminate well. It steps too smooth. That worries me. Too smooth. Why does that worry me? Because if it doesn't make good contact, I gotta hit it harder. And what's what's the rule when you hit it harder? It's not being smarter if you have to hit it harder. You never heard that rule? That's because I just made it up. You're not being smarter if you have to hit it harder. So to be smarter, you got to figure out a way to not hit it so hard. But sometimes, you just got to do it. Sometimes you just got to do it and take a risk. It's not that smart, but you know, gotta see the potential. You gotta see the potential. So you take the risks. Yeah, I hit it really hard. Took off a thick flake, relatively speaking. Did it fan out right? It didn't fan out completely the way I wanted it, but it was okay. It is sufficient. Even though there might be a little bit of steppiness, I might be able to pressurize that out of there. There's a lot of stuff. A lot of chatter and little crushings and stepperings. Because of the nature of this type of obsidian, it's very crushy. the secret to dealing with this crushy stuff only time and practice only time and practice and adapting to it just getting the feel for it I know a napper who said he practiced on actual hard candy 
real hard candy. He napped sugar, basically, in hard candy form, just so he can get better at napping the really delicate stuff. So it is a thing. When, you, when I say it's like napping hard candy, that's where I'm getting it from. And yeah, he had a big vat. Well, not a big vat, but he cooked up a vat of hard candy. And napped it. It is possible. According to him, I've never tried it. And it's crazy. For me, I am not that dedicated. But I guess he was napping a lot of obsidian. He said, this would be good practice. I don't have any obsidian. I think that's what he said. He was low on obsidian, so he didn't want to ruin it. Yeah. step fracture sometimes you can pick those out pardon me while I get rid of all the itchy flakes this itch is like fiberglass if I because I put my hand on my pants like I mean my forearms on my pants and there's flakes everywhere on top of my pant legs so it starts to itch under my, you know, my lower arms down in here like fiberglass does. Okay, let's, I'm going to try to pick out some of those step fractures. I need my spatula tool to be sharp. Sharpen it. Yeah, see how sharp that is? Need to get down in there. Can you see? Nope, my thumb is in the way or my flaker's in the way. Making you blurry. I just push it on the front of that step fracture and try to pop it out. That popped out a pretty good portion. Yeah. That crushed it a little bit, but it did pop it out, kind of, sort of. Let's see what it does on this side. Listen to that. Listen to that natural glass. Squeaky. Come on. Is it going to do it? It's trying to do it. Yes. The good thing about scratching out step fractures with steel on obsidian is the steel doesn't leave metal marks on the obsidian not that much if any so you can go to town and try to pick out those things go to town on it now that I'm here I'll use a spatula tool to remove little flakes without crushing the edge it's just clean little snaps why do I want to do that because I see some need to Remove thick spots and symmetrize it. Get the symmetry going here. So I'm just going to take little bitty flakes off the edge by pushing downward on the surface. Can you see? I'm pushing downward on the surface. Popping out short little flakes. Kind of like beveling. To work on the symmetry. And see, it leaves that kind of edge. It's a little bit thicker than you would get when when you would do a, a pointed pressure flaker pass the edge is thicker when you just hit the surface and go down it leaves the edge a little thicker but it's effective in that it won't leave any little crushings and it'll leave it robust enough for another pass with the pressure pointed pressure flaker robust yeah a robust edge is nice on obsidian if you want to do further pressure it starts getting too thin and then you try to add pressure and you mess it all up try to do some more pressure on a thin edge just so 
you think you can get it razor sharp and you end up not getting it razor sharp but you get it very dull very dull sharp yeah <laughs> that's what happens in obsidian you get dull sharp it can create the sharpest edge in the universe except when you're flip napping it yep then it becomes the dullest edge in the universe funny how that works you don't want little crushings on the edges nope 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 everybody knows that already everybody knows I don't have to be telling you and yeah I'm using the same spatula tool for everything I first I pick out the step fractures and then I do a little bit of edge work and now I'm doing a notching same spatula tool spatula like Mr. Krabs would say spatula I think he says it that way from what I remember I don't remember so good on that show it's been a while where did Spongebob go anyway is it now the Patrick show or is that is that available yet I heard it it's supposed to be a thing somewhere I heard it You're just saying it because your name's Patrick and you got a Patrick show. That's a flit nappy show. Okay, fine. I wasn't thinking about that, but now that you mention it. <laughs> All right. I make myself laugh. And I laugh because I make myself laugh. It's a spiral. I'm spiraling. Remember the spiraling from SpongeBob? Spiraling. Yeah. Except it was never good. If SpongeBob was spiraling, it was never good a good thing. The, uh, the writers for that show are geniuses, I tell you. Yep. So it's a little bit thick to be notching it like this. From the base. But... You know, it'd be, it'd be more effective if I was notching from the side. This base is a little thick, but I don't want to thin it down too much because I'm, if I thin too much from down here, it snaps it in half, right? Right. I'm glad you agree. I don't want no arguments. No argues. <laughs> I'm taking a chance to do those pop-outs. I hope you understand that those pop-outs are dangerous. If you're going to do it, just be warned that these pop-outs that I do like this are very dangerous. They're for thinning, but they can easily wipe out the barb or the ear. You can easily wipe this area out or this area or both. So don't attempt this at home, boys and girls. I'm what you call a professional. Yeah. Yeah, I don't care. You can try it. Don't matter to me. It's not my stone that you're working. <laughs> yeah, the the object is don't push in that direction, going that way. Push going this way if you can. See, I popped that out going in that direction right there. I was smart and lucky. I was smucky. <laughs> 
You didn't know that smucky means smart and lucky? You didn't know? Now you know. Ouch. All right, I got flakes. Hold on. They're catching up to me. Where are they? They're all over my... They're itching me. It's not cutting me. It's itching me like crazy. That's the thing. The itchiness drives me nuts. Okay. Some people can't stand the itchy. I'm usually pretty good at itchy, but when I'm flit napping, I don't like the itchy. <sighs> there we go. See, if I'm not itchy, I can do that. I can push out those little pop-outs. If I'm not itchy. Okay? All right. I'm feeling like this should be wrapping up soon, so I'm goofing off a little bit. Goofing around. Because I'm feeling this should be... This should be getting toward the end I should be done here in a minute I don't want to leave these the bottoms of the notches stalled with crushings but I might have to I'll try to pop out one last pop out. Very dangerous, boys and girls. One last pop out. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. Dangerous, yeah. Who used to say it that way? Somebody in my family, I think my mom used to say that. It's very dangerous. Still crushy at the bottom. I don't like it. It's crushy because I'm not doing it right. I know it's too thick to start you know it's for one it's too thick I shouldn't be trying to thin it when it's so th I mean trying to notch it when it's so thick but it is obsidian and it's not too bad all right that's all I'm gonna do to mess with it I'm not gonna mess with it no more no nope. except a little bit <laughs> Just to get rid of the powdery areas. All right. No serrations. Just simple, simple spatula tool sharpening. I'm not in the mood to do the, the regrinding and the sharpening with the pointed tool. I'm just going to sharpen it with the spatula tool and call it good. All right. All right. I knew you would agree. Aren't videos so great? Everyone agrees whenever I say, right, right, right? Yeah. It's not just my imagination. Everyone agrees. You can't prove that it's not. You can't prove that you're not agreeing. So there. It's logic. <laughs> you wish. 
Absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. That's logic. And people hate that. People hate logic. I don't know why they hate it so much. And if they don't hate it, they just go... Stupid. Stupid. Emotions, dude. That's where it's at, man. People respond to emotions because they're emotional. Homo sapiens emotionalis. Yeah. That's our name. It's not Homo sapiens logicalis. Nope. can't argue with it with you there no homo sapien emotionalis or whatever yeah I'm still gonna push back on that I'm still gonna yeah I don't care you don't like logic it's all right with me I'm still gonna do it But you're not logical with your napping because you always break your rules. Yep. I know. You don't need to remind me that I break my own rules. I do it for expediency. That's what expediency means. You know? It's a way to kind of cheat a little bit. To know when to take the shortcut. It's expediency. You know when to take a shortcut. To be smart, you don't take shortcuts, but then you end up with stuff that's thick. You know, you end up with a piece that's thick, and you don't see the potential, because you're always backing off from the limits. It's smart to back off from the limits, because then you won't break as many, if any. And yeah, I, I, I backed off from the limits on this one a little bit. Except when I when I saw that there was no way to thin down the middle without a big old honking strike here and there that risk snapping the whole thing. Yeah. This one does sharpen up nicely, but only because I'm taking these spatula tool flakes. If I was pushing on the edge with a pointed tool, I think I'd be getting a lot of crushing. Because I was getting some near the tip just a little while ago. I mean, I managed to thin down the tip with the rounded pointed tool. And I just dressed it up a little bit with the spatula tool. But as you can see, the edge is kind of thick compared to a pointed tool that scoops out the edge with bulbs. Yeah, the spatula tool leaves it very convex. It leaves the sides convex without bulbs. You know what I'm saying? With a pointed tool, it'll bulb the edge. When you pressure flake, it'll, it'll leave a hollow ground effect. Then you switch it. You switch it over, and you do the same thing on the other side. And it's really, really thin on the edge when you do it that way. But I didn't do it that way on this one because I didn't want to see any crushings. I just wanted to see nice, shiny edge with no white powdery crushings. I tried to get it symmetrical, but it's still a little wonky. This side right here is indented. Like, it goes inward a little bit. This side goes outward a little bit. Yeah, but I, I'm going to leave it. Just notice I can push off that step fracture. Ah, you kind of got all crunchy. Sometimes when you push off a step fracture, it gets all crunchy. But at least there's no more step fracture, or at least there's not that much of it. Let's see, can I pick out some of those nasties with the, the even sharper tool than the sharpened spatula tool? 
I tried hitting that earlier with the spatula tool. It didn't work that great. There it is. I shouldn't be rubbing it like this because I've cut myself before doing that. A flake will loosen up and you rub it like that and it just zip, zips right across your finger and you got yourself a cut and you don't even know. You leave your little fingerprint everywhere. So dang, where did I cut myself? Couldn't have been on the surface when I was trying to clean it off. It's lopsided. It's indented there, but not there. And this side's straight, and this side's bulgy. It makes me want to hurl. <laughs> Some guys will say, really? They just, they just tuned in. Why do you nap if sometimes you feel sick with it? No, I'm just, I'm kidding, right? I say that because of the responses I get well, sometimes. No one will say anything bad. They'll just, they just, they'll just mention it. You know, they'll, they'll ask something. How difficult is it to actually get it perfectly symmetrical? It's kind of a hint that I didn't get it symmetrical because maybe it's really, really hard. No, I just didn't want to mess with it. I don't want to mess with it because if I start messing with it too much, you know what happens. It just snaps. It'll snap. This is about as thin as I want to go. And uh, let's see if I can get a, a ratio. Two and a half by one and a half. Now, we're going to do this in millimeter to get the ratio. So the millimeters is 37, and the thickness, 5, 7 to 1, yeah. Just so you know, I'm not cheating. It's 5 millimeter, and it's 30, 35, or a little bit more, 7 to 1. That's good enough. 6 to 1 is usually my average. 7 to 1 is a little bit better than my average. All right. How does it look on a little that little dart for shaft or a knife and little bitty knife handle? I just found this recently. Oh, it looks pretty. It fits perfect. Yeah. I don't know why. I haven't been flint nipping that long. I I, I really don't know why you know it ends up fitting my four chefs i have no idea mm -hmm, mm -hmm. no I, I just know which ones to pick that will fit right but let's see i got this big fat one it'll fit on that one too except we got tons of room for the fat the fat heads yeah but if it was nice and narrow it would fit in just like that. A little bit of extra wood up on the blade never hurt nobody. Yeah. But this one fits just right. And it's a it's a V-shape too. So that means I was very careful getting this one symmetrical. Symmetrized it from the side view. And it's a little knife. Or a, 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 a little dart point. Force it into a cane shaft. And you got yourself some ammunition and you can take it out and use it as a little knife why would you want to use it as a little knife what could you possibly do with it made of obsidian other than poke someone's eye out I have no idea except poke someone's eye out yeah, yeah it might be useful for that you never know. You don't know. They could have been big time eye pokers. <laughs> okay. Thumbnail and we'll shut up. All right. That's it. Let me take a picture. Okay. That's it.